You know, Spider-Man Lotus has really wiped its ass with the reputation of fan films. I feel like if you ask anybody to think of a Spider-Man fan film, the first thing they're gonna think of is this horribly managed nightmare. And that's just kind of unfair, you know? The fan film scene is going to be surely a wreck from now on due to the effects of Spider-Man Lotus. Unless... You know, I actually have a couple of fan films here to show you to wash that nasty taste of Spider-Man Lotus out of your mouth. From short to long, I've got a couple of Spider-Man fan films that'll help you forget about your great sin of donating to the Indiegogo campaign for Spider-Man Lotus. It's okay. How could you have known how horrible that would have gone? I forgive you. Actually, it's not my place to forgive you. Um, let me just show you the films. Spider-Man Cake Day from the boys over at Corridor is one of the most well-made Spider-Man films I think I've ever seen in my entire life. It has an incredibly fun premise and tells a story that you could very easily imagine Peter Parker living through. It's a very simple story. Spider-Man needs to get a cake for Mary Jane's birthday party and he has to do this while the long-forgotten Spider-Man villains, the Enforcers, are running rampant through the city after just robbing a bank. The CGI in this film looks amazing and the swinging scenes are genuinely really fun to watch. It's a bit noticeable that it is CGI at times, but it's not bad enough that it'll take you out of the movie. That being said, the suit in the movie is pretty rough. It's got a couple things going for it, like it's brighter colors and decent paintwork, but the front spider just does not look good. I don't understand. Somebody clearly took the time and the effort, and yes, this took a shit ton of time. Just look at it. The whole thing is puff painted. They took the time to puff paint the entire red section of the Spider-Man costume, and yet they phoned it in on the logo completely. It's literally one of the most important parts of the costume, and they just said, fuck it. These Spider-Man lenses, too, are kind of weird. The lenses weirdly push against the fabric of the mask, and not only that, they look slightly misaligned. It's such a shame that this fan film is so good, but the Spider-Man costume in it messes up the two most important parts of the Spider-Man design. That being said, Spider-Man himself is pretty good in this movie. He's definitely on the younger side, and his quips are pretty funny. If I had to describe this Spider-Man, it's like if you put the soul of Tom Holland's performance into a comic-accurate movie. This is your last chance to surrender. I'm about to get my second win. Yo. Ah! Right now. The movie is supposedly set in 1963, too, which is really fun. It allows a lot of the characters to dress in the way they do in the original Spider-Man comics. Peter Parker's wearing his nerdy-ass school outfit, and the Enforcers all look retro, too. They are in no way a match for Spider-Man, unlike most villains Spider-Man is put up against in his movies. But that's not really important. What makes them such interesting villains in this movie is not the fact that they can threaten Spider-Man himself, but rather, they threaten to disrupt his personal life as Peter Parker by stopping him from getting his cake. I know it may seem silly that this movie is just about this one concept, but I think a lot of people need to know that not every fan film needs to be this super long, drawn-out story. This movie is so solid because it's so short, and because of that, it manages to wrap up its story in a concise and very satisfying package. Spider-Man needs a birthday cake for Mary Jane by 2 o'clock while the enforcers make a daring escape from the police. Who will Spider-Man choose? Mary Jane's cake or his responsibility to the people in New York? Fuck New York, bitch. I want the cake. And this movie has a J. Jonah Jameson cameo at the end, too. This film's a 10 out of 10. Corridor, come here. Stop making these shitty AI videos and make more of these. Thank you. Boca Pictures brings us a Spider-Man fan film where Peter Parker might just be at his worst. He's strung up by his wrists, locked in metal cuffs. His suit has been bloodied and bandaged. And worse yet, his mask has been removed and put on a surgeon's side table. Whoever has captured Peter Parker, they've definitely been experimenting on him. And as Peter comes to, someone enters the room, a soldier of the hand. Well, ain't you pretty? Peter immediately fucking BOOM! Ethan Bradbury slams his ass into a wall. Puts his mask back on and completes his look, which in all fairness is a really odd looking one. His lenses are really short, to the point where they don't even resemble Spider-Man eyes anymore. 
His front and back logos are completely ripped from the Sam Raimi movies, and on top of that, his entire suit seems to have been knitted or something. Like Peter had some grandma custom make a sweater suit for him. Maybe Aunt May did this, I don't know. I mean, is it one of my favorite looks for the character? Certainly not. I find it kind of odd and off-putting since this suit seems to lack any gloves. But honestly, I think it looks great within the context of this film. It's weird, it's menacing, and the actor looks absolutely massive and imposing in it. Which is perfect because seeing as the next three minutes of this film are going to be entirely dedicated to Peter Parker beating the shit out of these men who are desperately trying to take him back to their facility. The fight scenes in this movie are actually really good. You can really see Peter get weaker and weaker as this battle to get home goes on. Spider-Man actually seems to be pretty low power in this movie, but I actually think that's okay. Whether it's because this is a fan film and they couldn't afford to have Spidey leaping around or whether it was an intentional choice, I think it benefits the film. Honestly, I don't want to spoil where this film goes too much, but it's a fun watch and it's only like 9 minutes. So go watch it. There's a part of me that keeps me awake at night. I want a Spider-Man movie from the 90s! And Dan Poole's Spider-Man fan film is it. Green Goblin's Last Stand is an absolute treat for fans looking for a full-length, comic-accurate Spider-Man film. It may take a bit to get past the low-quality footage, but I promise there's so much in this film that you need to see as a Spider-Man fan. Like Dan Poole's stunt work as Spider-Man. Seeing him swing around that building, when I, when I filmed it, I didn't expect it to to turn out uh, the way it did. I guess because when I was viewing it, uh, I, was, I was filled with uh, fear. People ask all the time, why did you swing from that fire escape? Why did you swing around that building? The answer, the simple answer has always been, I needed the shot. That's it. That's it. How am I going to show a guy with the ability to shoot webs and swing around the city without swinging around the city? It's just, it had to be. Oh my fuck, he needed the shot. He needed the shot. This man is my goat. This man is literally my fuck. like, this man is my idol. Dan Poole is a fucking maniac who could have killed himself multiple times throughout the production of this film. No one asked him to do this, and yet he did anyway, multiple times, simply because he wanted Spider-Man to actually swing around in his movie. And I love him for it. This movie literally opens with Spider-Man chasing a car and riding on top of it through the streets of New York. Forget that CGI shit. That shit ain't real yet. It's time to hop on cars and swing from ropes for real, baby. Dan Poole, I fucking love you. Anyway, of course this film features the Green Goblin, who is an absolutely haunting figure. This film really does a good job making Norman Osborn seem like an unstable freak, and watching him wander through his empty home looking for his son is so ominous and creepy. The last thing that happened to Norman was a warehouse explosion that left him with amnesia during a battle with Spider-Man. Each shot in this scene as he walks through this house contributes to the fear that this scene is obviously trying to instill in you. And it works. Like, I cannot say this enough. This movie is incredibly well made. In Norman Osborn's craze for answers, he's led out of his home by a hallucination of Spider-Man. He runs towards a burnt down warehouse as he slowly starts to remember his past as the Green Goblin. He remembers everything, including that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. Gwen's also in this movie. And you know what that means. A spinal injury. And before we get to that, I actually want to talk about the Spider-Man suit in this fan film. Fucking phenomenal. It looks amazing jumping around on screen. And while it may look unprofessional up close, I think it adds to the charm of the costume. And it still looks great on screen nonetheless. Not to mention those gorgeous reflective eyes. Dan Poole looks and acts super great in it too. He perfectly fits the character, mask on or off. He doesn't get to just be a regular Peter Parker either. He gets to be the pissed off, I'm gonna kill you, Peter Parker, too. I don't want to go any more into the film so you can enjoy it yourself. I don't care if it's 50 minutes. Go watch it. But of course, after my video is done, just, just wait. Okay, I might, I might even do a video covering this fan film myself. It deserves it. The year is 1992. 
10 years before Spider-Man's origin story would be told to the masses via Sam Raimi's blockbuster hit, a group of filmmakers over at Grinnell College had come together to create the film Spider-Man Origin. This movie stays incredibly close to the original issue of Amazing Fantasy 15. There are even some shots that are taken straight from the comic, and the plot plays almost exactly the same. Peter Parker wakes up to his loving family, Aunt May and Uncle Ben getting him ready for his day at school. Peter is made fun of by his classmates, and yet he still offers for them to tag along with him to the new science exhibit going on. They don't really pull any punches making Peter lame in this movie. He is a complete dork. During this experiment, a spider accidentally wanders into the radioactive beam and bites Peter with its last ounce of strength. Peter stumbles outside, winded, as a car almost hits him. Also, what? Why the fuck is this guy driving in the alleyway? What the fuck is going on? Peter leaps out of the way just in time and scales up the side of the building and manages to rip a steel pipe right out of the building. He marvels over his new powers and decides to use them to win some cash beating up on a local wrestler, Crusher Hogan. Something I find really funny is how goofy Peter moves the second after he gets his spider powers. Look at him, he's doing, his, he's doing a little shimmy shuffle. I can't get over it, it's so goofy. Of course, he beats Crusher Hogan, all while wearing his original masked Marvel costume and is offered a TV show spot by Max Schiffman. Peter then goes home and makes the best Spider-Man suit that I've shown you in this entire fucking video. The red pops really well with the shiny blue fabric they used. Guys, there's fabric variation! Damn! I'm creaming. Look at the web pattern! It's so clean! There is no way this thing was not professionally made. Who made this? I looked through the credits, they don't tell you! I wanna know! Look at the front logo! Look at the back! Oh! It also kinda resembles a lot of John Romita Sr.'s art of the character. Peter of course gets his TV appearance and is left airheaded by his newfound identity and abilities, which of course leads him to making the biggest mistake of his life. Spider-Man stands by as a criminal is being chased by a cop through the building. The cop asks Spider-Man why he let them pass, and Peter and his newfound arrogance says this. Sorry, pal, but that's your job. From now on, I'm looking out for number one, and that means me. I'm through being pushed around. Peter goes home and is gifted a microscope from his uncle and aunt, and that was the last thing his uncle would ever give him because his ass dies in the following scene. Peter rushes home to find Uncle Ben has been shot, and the policeman on the scene tells Peter that they have the man held up in an old warehouse. Wait. Wait, 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 let's put, let's put a pause on this real quick because I just realized something. This cop tells Peter where this criminal that has just killed his uncle is. And then maybe about like a little bit later, a masked vigilante shows up and apprehends him for the police. It happens the exact same way in this comic too. In fact, in this comic, the policeman is even on the scene at the warehouse. Now, either this cop is an idiot or he's smart enough to realize that Peter is obviously Spider-Man and keeps his secret. I like that second one. Spider-Man finally gets to the warehouse and of course punches the murderer so hard that they had to play this bitch back three times. He pulls the man up to face him, only to realize... No! No, it can't be! It's the burglar that slipped by me! Uncle Ben! Dad, it's all my fault. All my fault. Now I know there isn't much left to cover in this fan film since it's only about 11 minutes, but I'll leave it at this so there's at least a small incentive for you to watch this film. Honestly, I know I probably spoiled way too much of these movies, but I still really think you should watch them all. But if you're not really sure, I'll basically tell you what these films are all about so you can get a little sample before you get into the real thing other than just my commentary. Spider-Man Cake Day is a fan film for the modern, yet slightly newer Spider-Man fan. I'd recommend watching this if you'd like something short and if you only care for fan films that keep their seams pretty well hidden. I'd recommend Spider-Man Eclipse if you'd like a darker Spider-Man fan film that's a bit more stunt slash combat focused. This one's also pretty short, just under 10 minutes, so it's definitely worth your time if you'd like to see Spider-Man really go through some shit. Spider-Man Green Goblin's Last Stand is a fan film I'd recommend if you really want to see a 90s blockbuster Spider-Man film. This movie has everything you could want. Swinging, parkour, a great suit, Gwen Stacy, and some of the most brutal fights with Green Goblin we've ever seen. And finally, Spider-Man Origin is a fan film I'd recommend for those who want a film made by people 
who give a really big shit about the original issue of Spider-Man. That's all for me, folks. I still gotta finish making this Spider-Man suit tutorial and finish animating my own Spider-Man fan project. I'll see you all next time I have something really cool to show you. Ooh.